Welcome to Dollars and Data at the intersection of Microsoft BI and ROI. Today we'll take a look at SSIS RAW files, a very important data flow destination to consider from an overall SSIS design perspective. Here's what we'll cover today. Keep in mind that this video will actually provide two packages on Microsoft's TechNet Gallery. One is repeated from a prior vlog and generates data and a RAW file. The other is the package we'll demo today, which merely passes that data, 1 million rows, from one raw file to another. Links to those packages can be found in the YouTube description of this video blog. As some background, I'll mention that I rely on an SSIS framework in which raw files take the place of staging tables. Data only lands in SQL Server data warehouse tables when rows are ready to be placed in their final locations. True ETL, in other words. And the framework quickly processes many millions of records and rows, detects early arriving dimension members, late arriving facts, efficiently handles type 2 dimensions, and much, much more. So I'm not a big fan of staging tables. To the first bullet's point here, they add additional objects, tables that is, to a solution. And keep in mind that there's overhead incurred when importing data into an RDBMS. The second bullet admits that perhaps your goal is to do ELT because you're much more comfortable with T-SQL than SSIS. Or there are valid reasons because of blocking transformations you think will run better in SQL Server than SSIS. Sorts are a classic example though I've usually found SSISs to be entirely suitable for use. I understand these arguments, and there are times I would agree. When using the Parallel Data Warehouse slash APS Analytics Platform System, or the new Azure SQL Data Warehouse, for instance, their designs really beg for SQL to be used in an ELT manner. Another time I would agree is when the logic is exceptionally complicated and simply lends itself to SQL maybe something that requires lots of windowing and other functions. But the biggest problem with avoiding SSIS transformations is that you'll be unable to leverage SSIS's catalog. SSIS cannot, of course, automatically collect metadata when work is done outside of it. And there's a wealth of features and information that can be captured by the catalog and reported on. Scratching the surface on that topic, is SSIS MVP Jamie Thompson, who wrote several years ago about the SSIS catalog and many very important queries that can be applied against it. Now, ETL versus ELT aside, raw files also provide a great way to establish a quick and easy data lake. Now, the, de the definition of a data lake has changed over time here, but I'll go with the one that's shown. In this scenario, I create raw files and quickly, inexpensively, and with automatic backup benefits, archive them into Azure Block Blob Storage. If you'd like the data stored in a non-proprietary format, an alternative is to create Avro files and archive them into Azure Block Blob Storage. In fact, using SSIS to create Avro files for consumption by Hadoop slash HD Insight as well as Hive and Pig, is the topic of a separate Dollars and Data video. Having discussed pitfalls to avoid, here is a recap of our response. Feel free to freeze this video and consider the case for raw files that's been made thus far. Raw files are far from a secret, just very underutilized. Here are some books I own and respect that have touched on the topic of raw files. I seem to recall that there's a very good article on them at SQL Server Central, too. To wrap things up before we move to the demo, this slide hints at an important design pattern in my SSIS framework that you might want to consider as well. Number one, all packages are loosely coupled. I like to leverage pre-existing bodies of knowledge so any given package falls under one of four categories as described by Ralph Kimball. That's extract, cleanse, conform, and load or otherwise called deliver. For a given project, there could be multiple extract packages and cleansing packages, for instance. It could be that one extract package pulls in files, 
the other oracle data. One package performs regex cleansing of column values, the other specializes in address cleansing with a Melissa data component. Over time, they form a library of packages that you can pull off a virtual shelf and mix and match. From a project management perspective, because they're loosely coupled through raw files, it's been easy to assign different packages to different developers. All they need to understand are enough table-driven aspects of the framework to perform unit testing. When their work is complete, their packages are easily merged into a system test. Refer to my earlier comments about what you can expect to find on Microsoft's TechNet Gallery. Here's the environment in which our packages were developed and tested. Let's move on to the demo, which will be short because it just makes a point regarding how quickly data can be moved between raw files. All right, let's start our demo by taking a quick look at a prior package that generates data that we'll be using for this video. We'll take a quick look at the Connection Manager to remind ourselves about some of the very basic information there. And here's the CTE that provides the data that we're going to be using. That CTE has got a parameter that controls the number of rows that are produced. In this case, we'll make it 1 million rows. And I'll go ahead and start this with uh, Control F5 rather than F5. So no debugging, which we will see here in Task Manager in a bit, creates a DT exec process, which is nice because it's 64 bit. If it were 32 bit, we see a, an indication of that, as we do for uh, SSDT immediately above it. Now, the, having a 64-bit process is not going to help much in this particular case, but normally it certainly does. Now, I might speed ahead on the video. It takes about 20 seconds to produce that million rows within this uh, rather paltry little VM environment. I've got uh, two virtual processors assigned and uh, about 4 gig of memory. So that's it, and uh, we see our raw file over here on the right. And now we'll go ahead and consume that. So here's the topic for this particular video, just a very, very simple pass-through almost, uh, where we take the contents of one raw file and presumably do some processing and then dump the results, the resulting payload, into another raw file, uh, presumably for consumption by another package that's been daisy-chained within our ETL framework. There we have it. It really took no time at all. Uh, my time can differ depending on the status of the resources in my VM environment. I've seen it take anywhere from sub-seconds to perhaps as long as seven seconds. But in any case, it's, it's a very, very uh, efficient way to go ahead and pass data from uh, one package to another. And that's what we wanted to focus on. So that's it. A quick introduction to raw files. And thank you for visiting Dollars and Data.